हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू केमोट्रोपी लर्निंग सो इन लास्ट वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द रिडॉक्स टाइट्रेशन एंड इट वाज द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट एंड इन लास्ट आई हैव डिस्कस्ड वन टाइप ऑफ इंडिकेटर व्हिच वी यूज इन द रिडॉक्स टाइट्रेशन दैट वाज द इंटरनल ऑक्सीडेशन रिडक्शन इंडिकेटर एंड आई हैव गिवन एन एग्जांपल ऑफ डाइमिथाइल अमीन ओके so now in today's video we are going to see some more examples of indicators which are used in redox titration and the second type of indicator that we use in the redox titration is self indicator which is a very important uh, indicator which we use in the uh, redox titration okay so the main example the important example is your potassium permanganate that is KMnO4 which is used as a titrating agent and uh, which act as an indicator itself in a redox titration okay so what is the basic principle over this is that KMnO4 we know that it has pink color solution okay so in reduced form it will show almost colorless solution okay so at the end of the titration when all the reducing agent will get consumed and the next drop which will be the KMnO4 is in excess and will remain unreduced okay so what will happen KMnO4 is oxidizing agent and uh, what will happen it will uh, get reduced by the reducing agent and when the whole uh, reducing agent get consumed there is no reducing agent left to reduce the KMnO4 okay now what will happen the KMnO4 uh, in excess will give you the pink color solution so it will indicate the end point of the titrating uh, reaction okay so here I have given MnO4 minus will reduce to Mn2 plus here you can see Mn have plus 7 oxidation state and it will getting reduced to Mn2 plus so in this way this self indicator will help in giving the or uh, in detecting the endpoint in the given redox titration method okay now the third type of uh, indicator is starch starch as an indicator if we uh, we used to uh, have a experiment uh, in our school time and it was that uh, to uh, detect the starch in the leaf okay and that for that we use the iodine solution and it will give blue black color leaf okay so it was that only the starch will act as an indicator over here uh, and the iodine complex okay will uh, react with the starch to give a complex of a deep blue color so this will indicate the uh, titrating end point okay so it is basically uh, we need this type of starch in uh, obviously where iodine we are using in the titrating as a titrating agent okay so iodine complex which starts to form a deep blue color solution will indicate the end point so during the titration the solution remain colorless till the iodine is consumed okay when the uh, first drop of excess iodine will change the solution deep blue color okay and this will indicate the end point of that titration okay the last type of indicator which we use is external indicator and which we use rarely in the redox titration uh, because of some disadvantages i have mentioned over here the first disadvantage is that in the case of dark color liquids a sharp change in color at the end point is not visible okay so uh, what if the uh, reaction medium is uh, having the dark color so these type of indicator will be no use will be of no use over there because the the, the color will get dominated the reaction medium color will get dominated over the indicator color okay so we will not uh, be able to observe the correct uh, change in color and uh, this will lead to wrong uh, observation or wrong detection of the end point okay the second disadvantage of that uh, these types of indicator is that the indicator can form insoluble precipitate with an ion present in the reaction mixture okay so uh, the titration we are why we are doing this titration to analyze the concentration of the 
unknown uh, compound okay so if the indicator itself is just uh, forming the compound uh, complex or any precipitate with the ion which we have to calculate whose concentration which we have to calculate so this will lead to a wrong uh, calculation okay so that's why these types of indicators we rarely use okay i have given an example here this is a, your uh, potassium uh, ferric cyanide okay and which is used in the titration of potassium dichromate and mohar salt in acidic medium i have given in uh, reaction that uh, this indicator is just uh, forming a complex with the ferrous sulfate to give the ferroferric cyanide so it means some of the iron some of the ferrous iron are just complexed with the ferric iron to give the ferroferric cyanide so we need uh, we need to calculate the concentration of this ferrous ion only and now these some of the ferrous ion get attached or complexed with the uh, ferric ion to give the ferroferric cyanide complex which is deep blue in color will give you a wrong calculation of the given compound so what is the solution for this the solution for this is that we just put the drop of these indicators on a uh, clean tile and a number of drops are uh, dropped over there and uh, during the titrating period uh, we will just take out one drop at the interval of the times to check out whether the uh, titration get completed or not so how it will get detected it will get detected when the ferrous ion will completely oxidize to ferric ion. It means there is no ferrous ion left which get complexed with the uh, potassium ferric cyanide indicator to form the ferroferric cyanide. When there will be no ferrous ion left, there will be no deep blue color complex will form and the col color of the solution will remain colorless and hence we will get detect the end point of that titration okay so this was all about the indicators which we use in the redox titration and uh, in uh, next video we are going to talk about the stichiometry of the redox titration that is uh, the calculation which we use in the redox titration in order to find the uh, unknown concentration okay so thank you for watching this video and uh, please like subscribe my channel and if any doubt you are facing in any of the topic just dm me in the instagram or you can comment uh, in the comment section thank you for watching this video